الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الناصح الأمين اللهم صل على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد يا عباد الله الحمد لله على نعمة الإسلام والسنة حدثني جماعة من الشيوخ بإسناد كل إلى سفيان بن عيينة عن عمرو بن دينار عن أبي قابوس مولى عبد الله بن عمر عن عبد الله بن عمر بن عاص رضي الله تعالى عنهما عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال الراحمون يرحمهم الرحمن ارحموا من في الأرض يرحمكم من في السماء A number of scholars, a number of shuyukh They have narrated, all of them On the, using the chain That goes to Sufyan bin Uyayna on the authority of Amr bin Dinar, on the authority of Abu Qabus, Mawla Abdullah bin Amr, on the authority of Abdullah bin Amr bin Aus, radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said that those who are merciful, those who are merciful, they will be shown mercy by the most merciful. Be merciful to those who are in the earth and the one who is above the heavens, he will show you mercy. This hadith is tremendous because Al-ilm rahma, because knowledge is mercy. Natijatuhu rahma. Natijatuhu yani fi dunya rahma. The result of knowledge in this dunya, it is mercy. وَغَايَتُهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ رَحْمَة And the end result of knowledge, the ultimate يعني result of knowledge in the hereafter, that it is mercy. And of course, it means from a knowledge that is implemented. نعم. From a knowledge that is implemented. So it is incumbent and it is wajib upon the Muslims that we seek knowledge. That we seek knowledge about our deen. As the Prophet ﷺ said, طلب العلم طلب العلم that seeking knowledge is obligatory upon every Muslim. Naam. And that is seeking knowledge of those things in which we have to know about from our religion, from our belief, from our methodology, from our prayer, from the rules and regulations as relates to fasting, and from all of those things that are binding upon us. We have to know what is the Islamic ruling as relates to them. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us with wealth um, to such that we have to pay zakah, then we have to know the rules and regulations of zakah. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us with wealth and physical strength, where we have the ability to make hajj, then we have to know what are the rules and regulations of hajj and umrah, naam, so on and so forth. So it is incumbent that we seek knowledge. It is incumbent that we seek knowledge. But not just that we seek knowledge for the sake of seeking knowledge, but that we seek knowledge so that we may implement what we learn so that we may implement what we learn so alhamdulillah we continue going over the reflections on the 40 hadith of Imam al-Nawawi rahimahullahu ta'ala we are on the hadith the hadith Jibreel which is a hadith that is tremendous is hadith um sunnah it is the mother of the sunnah it is a hadith that Jibreel alayhi salatu wassalam he came therein teaching us our religion by asking the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam these very important questions in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam he answered we have reached the statement of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam when he informed Jibreel about what is ihsan as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam he said and ta'budullah كَأَنَّكَ تَرَاهُ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَكُنْ فَإِنْ لَمْ تَكُنْ تَرَاهُ فَإِنَّهُ يَرَاكَ 
to worship Allah is if you see him. And if you do not see him, then verily he sees you. And this is when Jibreel alayhi salatu salam, he asks, فَاخْبِرْنِي عَنِ الْإِحْسَانِ So inform me what is Ihsan. Naam. And it is incumbent that we know what is Ihsan in the religion. Because like anything else in life, like anything else in which we seek to gain benefit, we have to have goals. We have to have goals. We have to strive for goals and we have to strive to attain those precious and those valuable things. Naam. Uh, to go out without goals, without yeah, any a strategy for the attainment of those goals and so on and so forth, you'll find an individual, his success it will be daunting. Yeah, any, it will be lacking and wanting. Ala kulli hal, Jibreel alayhi salatu salam, he said, فَخْبِرَنِي عَنِ الْإِحْسَانِ So inform me about Ihsan. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he answered him by saying, أَنْ تَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ كَأَنَّكَ تَرَى فَإِنْ لَمْ تَكُنْ تَرَى فَإِنَّهُ يَرَاكَ To worship Allah as if you see him. And if you do not see him, Yani, meaning because you cannot see him in here in his dunya, then know that he sees you. Al Alama, Al Sheikh Abdul Muhsin, Al Abad, Ahmadullah Ta'ala, he mentions Al Ihsan A'la Darajat. The Ihsan, it is the highest of the levels. Naam, and this is what uh, yani, I alluded to by mentioning that we have to have goals. We have to have goals with Nilahi Ta'ala. We have to shoot for. Uh, for 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 goodness, we have to shoot for yani um, greatness, for lack of a better term, right? Al Ihsan ala darajat. It is the highest of the levels. Naam. It is the highest of the levels. This is a plus. This is a plus plus, right? And this is what we want to shoot for. We want to strive for as Muslims. Yani wadunahu darajatul iman, and below it. Is the level of iman? Is the level of iman? Yani faith. This is below the daraja of ihsan, and this isn't speaking about yani the darajat. Naam the darajat, right? Because for the darajat you will have al Islam, which is the first level, al iman, the second level, al ihsan, the third and highest of the levels, the third and the highest of the levels. Naam. So the so the Muslim, he should be striving to become muhsin. The Muslim, he should be striving to become one who ultimately is muhsin. Naam, he'd be striving to become mu'min. Naam, bila shak bila right. But, li but likewise, he'd be striving to become muhsin. One who is a good doer, who worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon what is mentioned here. As if he sees him. And since he knows he does not see him, because he will not be able to see him here in his dunya, then he knows for a surety that Allah is watching him. Naam, this is the muhsin. He worships Allah upon this manner. So, what is under the darajah of ihsan, then it is iman. وَدُونَ ذَلِكَ دَرَجَةُ islam, And under that is the level of Islam. Naam, the shaykh, he breaks it down. For كُلُّ مُؤْمِنْ Muslim. So, every believer is a Muslim. Naam, so every believer is a is a Muslim, is one who has submitted himself. So everyone who has true belief, the belief has touched their heart, then they are ones who have submitted themselves. Naam. Wa kullu muhsin, mu'min, Muslim. And everyone who has reached the level of ihsan, then this is one who the iman has touched his heart, and this is one who has submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa laysa kullu muslim mu'minan muhsina. And not everyone who has submitted are from those who that faith has fully touch their hearts and I want you to understand by that phrase fully touch their hearts nor are they of those who necessarily have reached this level of ihsan have reached this level of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if they see him uh, knowing that he sees them naam knowing that he sees them when he had the jaaf in surah al-hujarat and for this reason it comes inside surah al-hujarat يعني الله تعالى statement الله تعالى he says قالت الأعراب آمنا that the better ones they say we believe the better ones we say we believe meaning that we have complete faith we have complete faith نعم قل لم تؤمنوا ولكن قولوا أسلمنا الله تعالى says يعني telling the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم saying to them you have yet to fully believe you have yet to have full iman Naam, you have yet to have complete iman. So rather say, we have submitted ourselves. 
but rather say we have submitted ourselves because they have com they had completely submitted themselves but they had yet to attain full iman they had yet to attain full iman naam allah ta'ala he says walamma yadkhul al-iman fi qulubikum iman has yet to enter into your hearts in totality naam iman has yet to enter into your hearts in totality so it's important that we understand this reality that meaning in totality so this means that every muslim bila shaku bila raib they have belief every muslim believes in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meaning at the lowest level at the lowest entry level every muslim believes in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they believe in la ilaha illallah they believe in muhammad rasulullah so on and so forth so they have something from iman but they don't have complete Iman. So when we're speaking about here Muslim, Mu'min, Muhsin, so on and so forth, then these this these are terms when they come together. These are terms when they come together. So when they come together, then a Muslim or Islam it will point to this. The Mu'min Iman it will point to that. Muhsin Isan it will point to that. So on and so forth. But if they brought separately and we say Mu'min, then of course we mean Muslim. Yeah, every Muslim is is a Mu'min. Yeah. In that sense, now so it means the one who who is a Muslim, right? And likewise, when we say Muslim, then all of it enters into it. Bismillah Taala, now so it also used to refer to those who are Mu'min, Muhsin, so on and so forth, now So when they're separated, then the meanings are all brought together, and when they're brought together, the meanings are what are separated. And and we explained this before, now So if you say Islam, then generally what is meant when they come together, Islam, Iman, then. Islam is pointing to the outward actions. And this is why when Jibreel alayhi salatu salam, he asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam, what is Islam? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam, he told him, yani, to make the shahada, to make the salah, to establish the salah, pay, yani, pay the zakah, to the end of it. Now, these are the outward affairs. And when he was asked, and what is Iman? Then he said, and to, billah, to believe in Allah, yani, wa wa rusul, to the end of it. Now, and his angels, his books, and to the end of it. Right? So this pointed to what the internal affairs. This pointed to the internal affairs. Now, and this is because they were what they were brought together. But when they're separated, then each will carry and the meaning and encompass the meaning of the other. Now, so now we're speaking about if they are brought together. If we're brought together, okay? Because the first, the first level, the first step, is submission. That we submit unto Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and this is Islam. Now, al istislam lillah. بالتوحيد والقياد له بالطاعة والبراءة من الشرك وأهله. نعم. Is that we submit ourselves to Allah with a tawheed. That we submit ourselves to Allah by worshiping Him and Him alone, making all of our religion sincerely unto Him and to Him alone. This is يعني this the uh, the submission and being compliant to the rules and regulations, being compliant to His commands. نعم. And Freeing ourselves from shirk and from the people of shirk. Now I'm freeing ourselves from polytheism and from the people of polytheism. This is Islam. Now, طيب. we have to submit ourselves unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. طيب. After, or well, the next level, after having submitted in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after having yani, believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, certain aspects of belief, then of course. We can increase upon that. We can increase upon that, and that could become better. Now that could become better, meaning that what our iman could increase because iman goes up and goes down. So our iman it could increase. So every believer should be striving for the perfection, for the completion of iman, for the completion of iman. Now, and we look back here to this ayah. We look back here to the ayah from Surah Al-Hujurat. One point I wanted to mention that I forgot to mention is that this this ayah actually was a was a glad tiding for those Bedouins. Was a glad tiding for those Bedouins that that yani iman has yet to enter into their heart, meaning they have yet to believe completely. But it was a glad tiding to them that it, that they were going to believe completely. It didn't enter. Into, you didn't believe completely yet. So this is an indication that you're going to. It just didn't happen yet. So it was a glad tiding for them that they were going to have the completion of iman inside of their yani inside of their hearts. Now, this is what we should be striving to. 
that we have complete iman, that we perfect our iman. And from that which perfects the iman is what? Is we have to bring forth those actions. We have to bring forth those actions that are conducive for the individual who has, com has completed his iman. In other words, there are certain characteristics that are linked to one whose iman is complete. Ma'am, there's certain characteristics that are linked to an individual whose his iman is complete. Certain actions, because actions are from iman. Ma'am, actions are from faith. But so there's certain actions that we have to bring in order to be a complete believer. And we have to strive with these things. And these are our goals. These are the things that we strive to accomplish. Ma'am, these are the things that we strive to accomplish because we want to attain these levels. We want to attain these, 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 uh, yani all of these levels in which were mentioned. Ma'am, so before we get to Ihsan, let us just, yani, briefly mention an action that enters into a person having complete belief. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, لا يؤمن أحدكم, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه. That none of you truly believe. لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه. That none of you truly believes. Now, what's meant here? لا يؤمن That none of you believes. Meaning, none of you truly believes. None of you has complete faith. None of you has complete faith. Now, until you love for your brother that which you love for yourself. And it comes in, in a riwayah, which is a riwayah, mil khair from the good that none of you truly believes until you love for your brother that which you love for yourself Naam. so loving for our fellow muslims loving for our fellow muslim brothers and sisters that which we love for ourselves is nece is necessary is necessary to have completion and perfection of belief Naam. and this is something that we have to strive for until we reach the point where what makes the muslims happy brings us joy and what saddens the Muslims and causes them pain, causes us sadness and pain. We have to reach this level where where we, yani, our brother's uh, win is our win. And our brother's misery is our misery. Now, I mean, we have to have this care and this love for each other. This compassion and affection for each other. And until we reach that level, we will have yet to have perfect faith. We will have yet to have a completion of Iman. Now, I mean, so these are goals that we have to strive for. Because mediocrity, when it comes to, yeah, I mean, really, when it comes to anything, really, when it comes to anything, is not, is not sufficient. Now, it's not sufficient to just get by. No, 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 no. No, the Muslim, the Muslim, we have to strive to be the best at whatever it is that we do. We have to strive to be the best. We have to strive to excel. And how much more so as relates to our deen. So, an individual, he wants to strive. Nam compete race in doing good in khayrat compete compete race in doing good because you want that high level of jannah you want that high level of jannah that high level of jannah for those who did good and better than good and better than better than good Nam so we have to strive so there's always room for improvement there's always room to do better there's always room for growth there's always room for enhancement so we have to strive to yani to to become better alakullihal we have already spoken about Islam with Iman and things of this nature. So you want to put the emphasis on today's class and that is Al-Ihsan. So Ihsan, which is the highest of the levels, then it is to worship Allah as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and ta'abudu Allaha ka'annaka tara. To worship Allah as if you see Him. Naam? As if you see Him. Uh, Sheikh Abdul Muhsan, he mentions, ay ta'abudahu ka'annaka waqifun. That you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if you are standing bain your day. As if you are standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tara. You're standing in front of Allah and you see him. Naam. As if you're standing in front of Allah and you see him. This is how you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here in his dunya. Naam. Now the reality is that what? We're not going to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his dunya. But we will see Allah in the hereafter. We will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hereafter. The believers will see Allah in the hereafter. Bila shak wa bila raib. But an individual who has reached his level of faith, and this is the highest, this here is the highest level of faith, is that they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if they see him. Ka'anna ka'tara, as if you see him. Naam. 
ومن كان كذلك فإنه يأتي بالعبادات على تمام وكمال and whoever does this then they're going to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a most perfect and complete manner the one who prays the one who prays and he's praying that prayer as if he sees Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if he sees Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then bila shak wa bila raib this person will pray salat muwadda he will pray a prayer as if it is his last prayer his prayer will be yeah, he will have attentiveness in his prayer he will have khushur inside of his prayer he will he would strive to make sure his bowing is 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 proper his back is leveled he will brown he would he would make sure his sujood yani is leveled he will make sure that he's he's yani uh uh striving to praise allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in ruku' striving and begging allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inside of sujood yani you know complete stillness yani you know to the much as humanly possible inside of qiyam you know so on and so forth this person you know he he would he would pray in the most perfect of manners because he is worshiping as if he sees Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam. فَإِن لَمْ يَكُنْ عَلَى هَذِهِ الْحَالِ فَعَلَيْهِ And if he can't reach this level, because again, this is the highest level. This here, that you worship Allah, as if you see him, this is the highest level a Muslim could reach inside of this dunya. This is the highest level. There's no level higher than this. This is the highest level a person can reach inside of this dunya. Naam. And it has a name. It has a name. We're going to come to it shortly, inshallah. Naam. But if he is not able to reach this level, then, then, then there what? Then there's a level under this level. It also enters into ihsan. Right? But there's a level under this level in ihsan. Naam. And that is what? And if he's not able to reach this level, فَعَلَيْهِ أَنْ يَسْتَشْعِرُ أن الله عز وجل مطلع عليه. Then he has to know, he has to feel, he has to realize that Allah سبحانه وتعالى is watching him. That Allah عز وجل is watching him. لا يخفى منه خافية. There is nothing that is hidden from Allah سبحانه وتعالى. فيحذر أن يراه حيث نهاه. So he takes caution that يعني Allah will see him. As relates to something that he prohibited upon him. That Allah will see him doing something that, that he has made prohibited upon him. So he will be cautioned. He will be shy. He wouldn't want to do that. Naam. He wouldn't want to do that. Because he's shy. You know Allah Ta'ala is watching him. And he will be acting. He will be performing his deeds. When he is. Yani those commands. He will be fulfilling those commands. As if Allah sees him. So he'll be fulfilling those commands in the most perfect of manners. Naam. Ala kullin. This level, this level of ihsan, as the ulama, they explain, ruknun wahid is one pillar, right? Because Islam, remember, we know of Islam. Islam is how many pillars? Kam? Kam arkan? Who knows? Inshallah Ta'ala, you can write it there in the uh, comment section to answer the questions. Naam. For those who, yani, uh, Islam has how many pillars? Again, Islam it has how many pillars? Not all at once. Don't be shy. It has what? Five. Naam. Five pillars. Right. And Iman. Iman. It has how many pillars? How many pillars for Iman? And this could be found in the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And to Mina Billah. Wa Malaikatihi wa Kutubihi wa Rusuli. To the end of it. Right. Islam has how many? How many pillars? Naam. Ahsant. Ahsant. Ya Allah. Shukur. Allah Yahfadak. Naam. Iman has how many pillars? Iman has what? Six. Naam. Right. So Ihsan, Ihsan, it has one pillar. Ihsan, it has one pillar. And that is what is mentioned in the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This one pillar that you worship Allah as if you see him. Naam. And if you don't see him, that was since you cannot see him, meaning here in his dunya. Then you know that he sees you. This is the pillar of, of Ihsan. 
Naam. So if someone to ask you, how many pillars does, does Ihsan have? Then it has one pillar. And that is this pillar. Right? However, we should know that from this pillar, there are two levels to this pillar. You have the entry level and you have the highest level. Naam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned the highest of the two first. And that is that you worship Allah as if you see him. This is called Mushahada. This is called the level of Mushahada. Naam. That you worship Allah as if you see him. And the level that is under it is that you worship Allah knowing that he sees you. This is the level under it, the entry level. Naam. And that is Muraqaba. Naam. That is the level of Muraqaba. Tayyip. In order for a deed could to be good, because we're talking about deeds getting the best, right? Okay. Before they can be the best, they have to be good and acceptable. They have to be good and acceptable. In order for a deed to be good and acceptable, then it has to be khalisan sawaba. And it has to be khalisan sawaba. Naam, what is meant by that statement? And takuna niya fihi sahiha. Meaning that the intention in it has to be correct. This is what is meant by khalisun. That the intention, it has to be correct. And this means that an individual, they do it sincerely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is what it means by the intention being correct. That they do it sincerely for Allah. Naam. Naam. What is meant by sawaba? Sawaba, yani, an yakuna ala wafqi sunnah. That it has to be in accordance to the sunnah. Has to be in accordance to the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and this is what is the bare minimum, what is needed for a deed to be acceptable. Naam, it has to be upon Tawheed and it has to be upon the Sunnah. If one of those two are missing, then the deed is not acceptable. That is rejected. If it comes and it has shirk mixed with it, it is rejected. If it comes and it has bid'ah mixed with it, it is rejected. It has to be upon tawheed. It has to be upon sunnah in order to be good, good enough to be accepted. Okay? Now, after it is good enough to be accepted, now how do we take it to the next level? How do we take it to the next level? Right? We take it to the next level by performing that deed upon the station of muraqaba we perform that deed upon the station of muraqaba meaning that we know that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching us we perform that deed knowing that we are under surveillance we perform that deed knowing that allah azza wa jal he is watching us naam sheikh saleh abd aziz al sheikh hafizallah ta'ala he mentions he says هذا أقل that the station of مراقبة then this is under this is under under which station under the station of مشاهدة نعم so the station of مراقبة then this is under the station of مشاهدة ومقام مشاهدة هذا أعظم مراتب and the station of مشاهدة this is the greatest station this is the greatest station this is what we want to all reach the greatest station نعم and this station of Mushahada, this is the one yani allati yasiru ilayha al-abd al-mu'min. This is the one that the abd al-mu'min he wants to strive for, he wants to move towards. وَهُوَ أَنْ يَكُونَ عِنْدَهُ إِشَاءَ الْحَقِّ الْإِعْقِينَ And this is that he has with him some things that give him yani certainty. He has with him that knowledge, he has with him that, that, yani, that ilm, na'am, that ilm. That brings him certainty, a certainty. So with mushahada, likewise, with all of these, yani, uh, you, it, you, it requires a level, acquires a high level of knowledge. It requires a high level of knowledge that we will come to to look back and to see. Bithnilahi ta'ala. Ala kulli hal. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he mentioned both of these in his statement. And ta'abudu allaha ka'annaka tarah, fa'in lam takun tarah, fa'innahu yarak. To worship Allah as if you see him. To worship Allah as if you see him, and that is what? That is mushahada. And if you do not see him, since you cannot see him, yani in his dunya, then you know for surety that he sees you. And that is the station of muraqaba. Naam, that is the station of muraqaba. That you worship Allah, azza wa jal, knowing that he sees you. Knowing that he sees you. 
Sheikh Saleh, he mentions, he says, وَهِيَ يعني this مقام, مقام المشاهدة, وَهِيَ مقام أكثر الناس. This is the station of most people that they reach, meaning that those who reach the level of Ihsan, those who reach the level of Ihsan, this is the level that most of them reach, is this level. That they worship Allah as if, يعني, they worship Allah knowing that Allah sees them. Knowing that Allah sees them. Naam? And they worship Allah upon that manner. This station is a station that most people reach who reach the level of Ihsan, who become from the Muhsinun, the good doers. Naam? And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who reach this station. Naam? So therefore, this person, when they pray, they will pray upon the most excellent of manners. Naam? When they fast, they will fast upon the most excellent of manners. Why? Because they know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching them. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees them, hears them, knows what they're doing. That they are under constant surveillance. So this one has aforementioned, Salla salat muwadda. They will pray a prayer. Yani salla salat muwadda. They will pray a prayer as if it is their last. Naam? The most excellent of prayers. Totally concentrating. Because they know Allah ta'ala is watching them. Naam? They know that Allah Azza wa Jal is watching them. So as relates to Ihsan, this is the entry level. That a person worships Allah as if Allah uh, worships Allah knowing that Allah is watching them. Knowing that Allah is watching them. And as re as mentioned, when it comes to Ihsan, this is the lower this is the lower level of Ihsan. The entry level to Ihsan is that you worship Allah knowing that Allah watches you, that Allah is seeing you. Naam, طيب. The higher level, the higher level of Ihsan and the complete top level of what a Muslim could reach here in the dunya, what a Muslim could reach in here in his life, is, is the station of Mushahada. The station of Mushahada. Naam. And this is the station we should all be trying to reach because again, we want to be the what? The best. We want to be the best. We want the A+. Plus. And the A+, plus in this regard, then this is what? The station of Mushahada. This is the A++. Plus plus. Yeah, it's better than A+, plus actually. Right? This is Mushahada. So what does that mean, Mushahada? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, and Allah that you worship Allah as if you see him. Naam. You worship Allah as if you see him. Subhanallah. How can this be attained? How can this be attained? How can a person worship Allah as if he sees him here in his dunya? The Shaykh he mentions, Shaykh Saleh Abdazi al Shaykh he mentions, Wahadihi al Mushahada al Maqsud biha Mushahada al Sifat. La Mushahada al that. He said what is meant by it is that a person worships Allah as if they see him, meaning seeing or witnessing his attributes. Not that they, not that they witness him himself. Naam. Not that they witness Allah and see Allah him himself. Because we know here in the dunya, we're not going to be able to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here in the dunya. But for the believers, they will see Allah where? In the next life. Naam, in the next life, they will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But, but here in the dunya, how do we reach the level that we can see yani, uh, 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 Allah? Meaning, not that we see him, him himself, but that we see his attributes. Or, as the ulama, they mentioned, what is meant that we see the effects of his attributes. We see the effects, the traces of his attributes. Naam. This is what is intended by Mushahada. So for the believer who has reached this level, they're worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and everywhere they look in the creation, they 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 take notice and they yani, um, they take notice to the effects of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thus is a reminder. So this individual is under constant reminder. It's under constant reminder. So for example, when this individual sees, for example, yani, um, a tsunami, naam? for example, they see a tsunami and the destructive power of a tsunami, and they know that this is from 
Allah's creation. And this is what Allah has created. And that no matter how much power, how much force that that thing has, the one who has set up that system by way in which that these things come about is more powerful. Allahu Akbar. Then they realize and they, and, they, and they remember the power and the might of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because all of these things is nothing. The earthquakes, the, uh, the sinkholes, when the ground just opens and swallows up individuals, peoples, yani houses, and so on and so forth. Towns and villages and yeah, to the end of it. They realize this is nothing. This is this 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 shows yani the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who ana kulli shay'in qadir he is upon all things most capable when they look for example at the pandemic of the coronavirus and how this very small very small yani uh, thing that that in which it, it cannot even be seen by the naked eye it has crippled the world has crippled the world Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has decreed he has created this small little thing now I'm the small little thing that has crippled the most powerful nations, that has crippled the most powerful nations with all of their resources, with all of their strength, with all of their military might, with all of their military power. They have yeah, any, yeah, small cities floating upon the seas and these aircraft carriers and so on and so forth. Hundreds of people living in all the technology that is linked to it, all the nuclear submarines and all of this type of stuff and all of this and all of this. And yet this little coronavirus, COVID-19, little coronavirus has the whole world stopped, shut the whole world down. Now, and it's easy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of this is easy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want you to reflect. I want you to reflect because these things you see, yani, it gives you, you see traces of the power and the might of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those arrogant nations from before, those arrogant nations from before who were destroyed. What were they destroyed by? What were they were destroyed by? Were they destroyed by hard, heavy, rough things? Yeah, most of them, yeah, some of them, yeah, Sodom and Gomorrah, yani, uh, the, the homosexuals, then they were destroyed. Nah, they were destroyed by, you know, uh, rocks and, 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 and brimstone and, and, and the like. But, but, yeah, put them aside. How was everybody else destroyed? The kuffar from the people of Nuh by what? Water. Water is a very yani, malleable substance, right? Very easy substance. We manipulate it. We move it. We we you know we we uh, make irrigation and so on and so forth and you know channel it and so on and so forth. Now I'm dam it up and hold it back. You know so on and so forth. We manipulate water very easily. <laughs> By itself, someone throws water on you. Okay, no problem. It's, it's not a problem. They were destroyed by water. Others were destroyed by what? By wind. Now, things that ordinarily are very easy. Very easy. But it shuts it down. Now, all of this is a reminder of the, of the, of the power and the might of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So likewise, the one who has reached the level of ihsan, who has reached the level of mushahada, when they look at the coronavirus, they look at it differently. They look at subhanallah. Look at Allah's might, look at Allah's power. This little small thing, this little small thing has the world terrorized. This little small thing shut the world down. The most powerful nation with all their resources, they can't combat it. They can't stop its spread. The most powerful of nation, those who walk the earth the most arrogantly, now, now they are scared by a person sneezing. A person sneezing and everyone is, is, is scared. A person coughing, cough one time, just too much. Now, everyone, if you're inside of an aisle <laughs> in a store, you'll clear the aisle out. Everyone leave the aisle. and getting out of here. Why? Because they're scared of Corona. They're scared of COVID-19. All of this shows you that what? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create something so small that will shut the world down and have the most powerful of nations scared, have the most powerful of nations grind to a halt, to have economies go on almost yani, to, the, to the, the brink of destruction, so on and so forth. How many lives dead, uh, uh, lost, and so on and so forth. Yani, subhanAllah. Already to this point now in America, more people have died from COVID-19 than had died in the Vietnam War. And the Vietnam War raged for years. Here now it has been, the corona has been plaguing any America for months. And more people have died in months than had died in years over the course of an armed military conflict. It's just something to reflect on. This is an example. This is an example. Now, for the person who's reached the level of mushahada, when they see a beautiful sunset, when they see a beautiful sunset, 
with all of the wonderful colors and, and so on and so forth. This is a reminder to them of Allah's power, Allah's might, and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He Ahsan al He is the best, yani, He is the best creator, the best of those who create. Naam, because He's the only one that creates, meaning in this sense. Naam, that Allah, that, that they look at Allah's beautiful creation, look what Allah has created, how beautiful it is, how magnificent it is, so on and so forth. So, they appreciate the beauty of it. Naam, they appreciate the beauty of it, but it's a reminder to them. To praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam. So on and so forth. Naam. So on and so forth. When they see an animal. For example. Being kind to his young. When they see an animal being kind to his young. And they realize this is only a portion of mercy. This is only a portion of mercy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down to the to, to creation. Naam. There's only a portion of mercy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down to this dunya. And everything else for mercy is reserved for the believers on the day of judgment. Then they realize that look how merciful this animal is that it lifts its hoof as to not step upon its 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 baby, its young, that it yani, you know, it, it deals with its young in such a gentle fashion and caring fashion and so on and so forth, and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more merciful to the believers than this child than this mother is to the child. Naam. So this reminds them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is the most merciful. He is the shower of mercy, the bestower of mercy. So in looking at that, they're seeing what traces of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attribute of being merciful. Naam. So they realize this. They recognize that. And that causes them what to, to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To beg Allah for his mercy. Yani, everywhere they look, it enhances their, their ibadah. Naam. And this is the one who has reached this level where everywhere they look, they see the traces of Allah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attributes. They see the traces of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attributes. Now, the only way to reach this level is that we have to have the knowledge, we have to have ilm of the names and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Without having knowledge of the names and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will be unable to reach this level, we'll be incapable of reaching this level. Naam. So it requires great knowledge. It requires a great amount of knowledge, amount of ilm. And uh, this is, again, and, and I want to go back. This is why I mentioned we have to have goals. Because <clears throat> if you have goals and you know what is the route by way in which you need to take to attain those goals, then it changes your outlook on everything. So, for example, now, when a person sits and he studies Aqidah Tahawiyah, Aqidah Wasatiyah, Aqidah Wasatiyah, Sheikh Al Islam and Taymiyyah. Where a large portion of the book is speaking about the proper belief in the names and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now it takes on a totally different light for them. It's not just something that is academic and scholastic and so on and so forth. Now it's not just something that they gather in ilm so they, you know, so on and so forth. No, but they want to believe correctly. Now so they're gathering this information because they want to one. They want to first, but they want to believe correctly. They want to believe right. They want to believe in the way that the Prophet Sallallahu he taught us how to believe the way that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi he believed. Now they want to believe right. But also because what? They want the effects of that proper belief. They want the effects of that proper belief. And the effects of that proper belief is that this is the way that a person is going to reach the level of mushahada. That wherever where they look, they see the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the traces of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you can only reach that if you have proper belief and proper understanding of Allah's attributes. You understand? And... This is how we could yani, reach that level. So a person now when he studies or when she studies, it's, it's, it's a whole different yani, ball game for them. Because they're looking to accomplish even more than just getting the correct uh, information. Right? And it's important that we know we understand that this level is that we strive so that we could be able to recognize the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala everywhere we look. Right? This is what is proper. And it should, you should be warned against those Sufiya, those Sufis who they believe that you reach this level of Yaqeen where you reach the level where you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They mean here in this dunya. They're not talking about the after. They mean here in this dunya that you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so on and so forth. And this is not correct because we will not see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here in this dunya. We will not we will not see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here in this dunya. So anyone telling you that you reach the level of mushahada, this means that you're going to see Allah here in this dunya, then this is, as the Shaykh mentions, هذا, هذا من أعظم الباطل. This is from the most worst 
of, of, of falsehood. This is from the greatest falsehood, wa buhtan, and from the greatest lie, naam, and from the greatest lie. But rather, what is intended is that we will see what the traces of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what we will recognize and what we will see. Not that we will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself here in his dunya. Because Musa alayhi salatu salam, when he asked to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed him that you will not see me. Meaning you will not see me here in his life. In this life, this dunya, you will not see me with your eyes. You will not see me with the eyes in your head here in his life. No, that will not happen. Ma'am. So Musa alayhi salatu salam, he was not able to see Allah here in his in his world. So now you you gonna show me a Sufi who's better than Musa, who can see Allah here in his dunya? You see? Ala kulli hal, we will not see Allah in his dunya with our eyes. But we will see Allah. The believer will see Allah in the hereafter. The believer, he will see Allah in the hereafter. And that and that is the ziyada. Allah Ta'ala he mentioned his for the Muhsinun with ziyada. And that is to see Allah in the Akhirah, to see Allah in Jannah. And that is the greatest, the most best part of Jannah, is to see Allah. That is the best thing in Jannah, is to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But here in his dunya, for the believer, how do we reach the highest level? How do we worship Allah as if we see him? Is that we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while recognizing and acknowledging his, the signs of his attributes everywhere we look. The signs of his attributes everywhere we look. And that requires deep knowledge of the names and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, reflect on that and how important that is to know. And you got individuals telling you that the studying of the likes of Aqeedah wa Sutiyah wa Aqeedah Tahawiyya wa Shah Sunnah and Imam al Baburhari. والأصول السنة الإمام أحمد واللمعة الاعتقاد and so on and so forth that the studying of these books is يعني misplaced and is a sickness to have over concern with the studying of the likes of these books is misplaced and is a sickness because it's just dogma as as the Sufi as the Sufi one says نعم how misguided are they how misguided are they? How important is it to know our aqidah, to know and have knowledge of the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how much effect and how that will have on us and how important that is. But this one says the studying of it is a sickness because it is dogma. Yeah, subhanAllah. He is sick. That one is sick. Naam. He is the he is the foolish. So now what about those who say, oh, the Muslims are going through so much stuff. We are, we are being oppressed in this land. We're being oppressed in that land. And all you guys want to do is sit in the message and talk about aqidah this and aqidah that and tawheed this and tawheed that. We have bigger problems. Really? We have bigger problems. We have bigger goals. We have bigger things we want to yani, uh, attain. Those problems are problems. No one is arguing that. But the problem of not knowing your Lord is greater than that. The problem of not Believing correctly in Allah's names and attributes is greater than that. Naam is greater than that. Yes, it is. People may not like to hear that, but it is greater than that. And the reality of it is, is that the way that ultimately these problems are fixed, the way that these ultimately these problems are fixed, whether it's the problem in Palestine, Philistine, Naam, the problem in Philistine, or the problem in um, wherever you want to look at, in Burma, Naam, the problems that the Muslims are going through in India. The problems that the Muslims are facing in China, right? All of these problems, all of these issues, all of these calamities, all of this subjugation, right? That the Muslims are going through, all this the, of this humiliation that the Muslims are going through. You know what's going to lift that? Do you think a scene in Khutbah is going to lift that? No. Do you think you're over concerned with politics and so on and so forth is going to lift that? No. Do you think petitions and you know so on and so forth is going to lift that? No. Do you think that protesting and all of these things in his nature is going to lift that? No. Not at all. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us that we would if we if we do this and do that and do this and do that and do this and do that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put upon us a, a humiliation. Humiliation. He would he would he would he would lower us in the world. Until when? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Hatta Tarji'u. Until you return to your religion. 
until you return to your religion. So how are you going to return to your religion? By knowing it, first and foremost, and then what? Living upon it, implementing it, acting in accordance to it. So now, how important are these, are these, uh, you know, are these classes? How important are these topics? Because this is the, this is the real route to gain superiority back. As one of the kuffar they said, and I want you to reflect upon this and upon this, inshallah, ta'ala, we will end. One of the kuffar they said, as far as the Muslims, we're not really worried about them. Until Fajr looks like Jumu'ah, we don't have to be concerned with them. Just food for thought. When the Muslims had the power in the world and the strength, what was the level of their religiousness? What was the level of their religiousness? Now, reflect on that. Think about that. And think about where we at right now, and it is a result of our irreligiousness. It's a result of our sins and our transgressions. This is why these things have been put upon us, and a way to get these things removed is for us to return to our religion. That is the reality. Now, so just reflect and be wise, and 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 understand the magnitude that if we want to reach this level of mushahada, then we have to strive. We have to strive hard, and then imagine too. Imagine if. A great percentage of the Muslims in the world reached this level. Do you think that there will be anything from subjugation or humiliation that will persist, uh, yani, amongst the Muslims in this massive scale as if it is uh, as it is going on right now? I think anyone with a great brain, with a right mind, will realize nah, that will not persist. Wallahu a'la wa a'lam. We ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in wa fiqni. لما يحبه ويرضى وأن يجعلنا مباركا حيث ما كنا وأن يجعلنا من من إذا أعطي شكر وضبط لي الصبر وإذا أذنب استغفر فإن هؤلاء ثلاث عنوان السعادة هذا وإلا اللقاء استودعكم الله والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وجزاكم الله خيرا